in decolonizing feminisms, race, gender and empire building, Laura E. Donaldson delves into a critical misrecognition, or misprision, as she terms it, concerning the female experience in the pursuit of a unified feminist narrative. While feminism advocates for gender equality, mainstream white-centric feminism tends to overlook the distinct experiences of women of color, often neglecting the influence of racism in sexism. Conversely, feminists of color sometimes make assertions that could potentially fracture the feminist movement, by lumping together white women and men. The oversimplified notion of white supremacy fails to acknowledge that, despite their inherent privileges, white women still face oppression due to their gender, sexuality, and class. The simplistic metaphor of woman equals colonized man equals colonizer oversimplifies the intricate interplay of gender, race, and colonization. Donaldson's work seeks to analyze these intersections, utilizing an interdisciplinary approach and considering various forms of media, including films. The book is divided into seven chapters, each illustrating that an exclusive focus on a particular woman's perspective, often white, heterosexual, and middle class, is fraught with limitations. In the initial chapter, Donaldson addresses the contentious relationship between white feminism and third world feminism, exploring its impact on influential literary analyses, such as interpretations of Charlotte Bront's Jane Eyre. Donaldson examines the character of Bertha Mason from Jane Eyre, drawing from the works of Sandra Gilbert, Susan Goober, and Spivak. While Gilbert and Goober interpret Bertha as a reflection of Jane's hidden anxieties, Spivak argues, and Donaldson concurs, that this feminist reading mirrors the colonial narrative of disregarding the violence faced by native women, while elevating a colonial subject like Jane. However, Donaldson disagrees with Spivak's contention that Jane embodies both masculine and feminine identities, placing her on par with male figures in British imperialism. The comparison of these influential literary critics highlights the necessity for a new paradigm free from identity-based politics. Donaldson posits that allegorical feminism offers a way forward, allowing a range of women's experiences to embody the complex nature of feminist identity, and negate the idea of a singular, fixed self. However, it's worth noting that while Donaldson champions allegorical feminism, there's a perception throughout the book that she specifically applies it to the experiences of white women. This impression is reinforced by her exploration of white women's passive participation in the structural dominance of colonized subjects. For instance, she scrutinizes works centered around white female protagonists, like the film The King and I, adapted from Anna Leonon's memoirs. Traditional Western feminist readings hail characters like Mrs. Anna as strong feminist figures, but Donaldson uncovers a more complex reality. Anna's efforts to liberate native women inadvertently serve as another facet of colonization, masking racism under the guise of progress. Donaldson contends that for the white feminist movement to shed its race and class privileges, it must recognize its own voice as allegorical. Donaldson embarks on a mission to revolutionize feminist literary criticism, shedding light on the shortcomings of established methodologies. While advocating for an allegorical interpretation of the experiences of white women, she critiques the post-structuralist approach to textual analysis, particularly its tendency to overlook crucial contextual elements, 
especially in depictions involving marginalized groups. According to Donaldson, true objectivity in literary criticism necessitates an awareness of prevailing cultural narratives that impact specific communities. Donaldson also highlights the potential pitfalls of the post-structuralist emphasis on intertextuality. She warns that it can inadvertently reinforce the reader's ideological biases, potentially leading to the endorsement of one particular viewpoint to the exclusion of others. In contrast, she champions the concept of mestiza put forth by Gloria Anzaldua. This concept disrupts the fixation on constructing a singular unified identity, whether grounded in nationalism, ethnocentrism, or feminism. Instead, it encourages embracing multiple cultural influences, fostering a new form of consciousness. While decolonizing feminisms offers invaluable insights into the ideological biases permeating feminist literary theory, it may present challenges for newcomers to the field or those exploring literary theories for the first time. Donaldson's inclination towards intertextuality, weaving together various sources to support her arguments, can sometimes lead to a lack of coherence in the text, demanding multiple readings to fully grasp each chapter's narrative. One example is found in the second chapter, where readers must grapple with a myriad of arguments and theories spanning three different sources. The film The King and I, Anna Leonon's memoirs, and Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. While aiming to depict gender as a braid of complexly woven relationships, decolonizing feminisms ends up resembling a patchwork of chapters varying in quality and depth. It's worth noting a significant limitation in the book's treatment of gender. Donaldson predominantly focuses on heterosexual relationships between men and women, neglecting to address transgender identities or queerness. This omission is noteworthy, especially considering the ongoing marginalization and oppression faced by LGBTQ individuals, particularly those in minority groups. It's possible that this shortcoming may stem from the book's publication in 1993, potentially reflecting dated perspectives. In spite of these critiques, decolonizing feminisms remains a powerful tool for feminist literary critics, seeking to navigate ideological biases within their field. The book holds particular significance in tracing the evolution towards a more inclusive and intersectional approach to feminist and social literary criticism, prior to the turn of the 21st century. With its bold challenges to influential perspectives, decolonizing feminisms, race, gender and empire building, stands as essential reading for anyone interested in delving into the realms of postcolonial feminism and feminist literary theory.